Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Catholic Recon Testimonies from Reverts and Converts. I'm your host, Eddie Trask. I have a new background because we recently moved and I needed to make sure that St. Augustine is right here, always represented. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to comment and like. I appreciate all the feedback that we've been getting on the channel and please share these videos as well. This week's guest is Charles Baines. Charles, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's absolutely by pleasure. Just so everyone has some context, um, I know his daughter Trinity through Salt and Light Radio, do a radio show uh, for Salt and Light. And Trinity said, hey, she I don't even know how it came up, actually. I think she just said, my dad is a convert. And immediately, I mean, what's my what's my job? I immediately just said, OK, I got to talk to sure. Charles. So um, that's how it happened. So, Charles, if you would, I know that you mentioned that you converted uh, quite a while ago, which we'll get into. Why don't you go back to childhood or, you know, what that was like? And um, I'm assuming as a Protestant, but you go ahead and tell me how it all started. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I was I was born and raised um, Church of the Brethren, uh, which is has its roots in um, the pietists and um, uh, what's the term I'm trying to think of? Um, they're a peace church um, okay. and they originated in Germany. Anabaptist background, I guess. Okay. And um, they came to the States in the 17, I believe the 1740s, by the time most of them had come over from Germany because of more persecution over there. Anyway, uh, by default, uh, since my folks were uh, Church of the Brethren, uh, and it's, I live in a small town and, and most of that church was most of the town uh, mm -hmm. at the time. Um, I grew up in that church. Um, was that in any way connected? Sorry, is that in, in any way connected to the Mennonites? I, well, actually, no, it's not. And it's not okay. connected to the Amish or the Quakers. But, you know, stand them all side by side and you'll have trouble telling them apart. Okay. Uh, yeah. Biggest thing about that's a good point, because it, back in Pennsylvania, yeah. um, not in the West Coast, but back in Pennsylvania, it is it is hard to tell uh, brethren from the Amish, except the fact they're driving cars. <laughs> you know so uh and again it's it's uh that anabaptist pietist puritan background sure um so and and they're here they're in the west they're very much known as the peace church okay uh, most of them are conscientious objectors etc so anyway um born and raised there um my pastor that was in my church um good friends of the family. As a matter of fact, his daughter and I were born just a few months apart. And we literally grew up in the crib together, best friends forever. And um, we had a very, very close connection to that. Um, as a youngster, I was active in the church. Uh, I went to church with my mom almost every Sunday. Uh, if I wasn't having to uh, take up the slack on the farm, I was born and raised on a dairy farm Okay. And uh, here in Idaho. And um, still, I actually am now back there. Um, living, living in a, in a small, what we call the, uh, uh, the, uh, bunkhouse right next to the house I grew up in. Wow. And it's, um, a stone's throw from the barn out there and the, the farm that I grew up on. So no kidding. Uh, That's great. Yeah. So, um, I don't know it, to, to, to tie that into the whole conversion story. Um, my pastor, incredible guy. I, I never once ever heard him talk poorly of any other denomination. And um, very, very great um, order. And what was interesting as a youngster, I remember he would tell, he would use the, the church fathers in his sermons. No Yet kidding. it was like, who are the church fathers and what church are we talking about? Yeah. And that's, that, that stuck in the back of my mind. And over time, is, um, I acquired a, a, a taste for um, history. I'm a history fanatic, and especially medieval history. And the history of the church and the history of Western civilization go hand in hand. Yeah. And so I was very fortunate to be able to um, have resources that were relatively non-biased. And as I was researching this, not only in my mm -hmm. high school years, but on through college, um, I started to realize what the church was and how ironic it was that he would talk about the church fathers and, and, and espouse everything going on uh, from those, but 
he was he was still a Protestant minister, you know, and how that dichotomy occurred, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I got into college and um, there was a Brethren Church in Boise, but it was too far from campus. I went, I went to Boise State for okay. my bachelor's and um, my roommate was Catholic. And, um, you know, the poor guy, what he had to put up with me was terrible. I was, I was, even though, you know, the way I was raised, once you get out of the house, I was, I was a crazy guy, you know? And so, um, uh, my, my poor roommate, you know, had to put up with a lot, but at the same time, he, he invited me to go to mass with him. And wow. I under, I understood what mass was. I had no problem with it. And I had a great respect for the Catholic church. And I, I, I found myself very enamored with and drawn to the traditions and the ceremony of the church. Uh, when you talk about church, I just, that's just what I thought of. And mass, you know, was, that's just, that's the real way to worship, you know, and, and, and it was more my subconscious than my conscious mind. But the more I went to mass, the more I realized the beauty of it. I, I, I did want to ask you, what was the worship style like? for Church of the Brethren, because I, I don't know that background. So are we it's, talking an hour? Are we talking an hour and a half? Is it a big portion of a sermon? Um, how, how was that? It, it, it's broken up into the typical, we, we come in at about 10 o'clock and have Sunday school for all the youngsters and the adults. You know, you do your typical Sunday school yep. and everybody's broken up into various age groups. Yep. And then that went on from 10 to 11 and from 11 to 12 was the actual church service, the worship service, they called it. And um, the, the churches, the only decoration really was stained glass. And that was pretty, that was pretty radical for out here in the West. A lot of the churches in the, in the East don't have that. Uh, but um, it was very quiet. Uh, there was music and interlude and um, prayer and uh, the sermon, the sermon. Yeah. You know, the, the pastor's sermon took up 20 minutes of that hour, maybe. Okay. It, it wasn't focused on that. And, it, and, and in our particular case, especially I, and most churches, the brethren, it's not a hellfire brimstone type thing. You know, it's very, they're a new, they're a new, they call themselves the new Testament church and they follow the new Testament and Jesus in the new Testament. And that is their, Basically, that's what they use as their creed is the New Testament, which makes it very broad, but sure. that's how it is. And, and how about communion? What was, how frequent was that? Communion, when I was growing up, communion was only at Easter time. Oh, wow. And, and communion, it, it was the, the cracker, the little, the yeah. little wafer cracker and the cranberry juice in the little tiny, the little tiny oh, cup. Yeah. Little, yeah. Little cup. And yeah. that's what it was. And it was only once a year. Now I understand now my mother still. My mother still goes to church to the brethren, even though there's only about 20 to 30 people at any given time. Um, and most of them are over 50, but sure. um, they, they, they have uh, inter, uh, um, intermittent pastors that come in because they're, they're so small, they can't afford to hire a full-time, but um, they are having it more often. They have it almost every month now, she tells me, which is great. But now we've been in that whole conversation and Trinity's been the conversations with grandma about the real presence <laughs> and she's not buying that one yet. That's, that's, what's keeping her from being a Catholic is the real presence. She just, no, that's not real. That can't be happening. No. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, sorry. I derailed a little bit. You were right. talking about in mass, the beauty of, you said the beauty, I think, I don't know if you were talking yes. about just absolutely the, the look of it the tradition everything under everything <laughs> everything from everything from start to finish yeah and the more i understood the the process and i started to understand what the liturgy was and why it was important and started to research well what's the sacrament you know why is it most protestant churches only have three to four if they want to even call them sacraments yeah exactly um they yeah. may only call they may only call marriage a sacrament you know and 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 the priest you know being a priest but that's about it uh, some don't have, but more than two. So it varies between Protestant churches. Um, but just everything about it was um, just mesmerizing. And I, I'm, I'm one of those that I'm all about high church. The more bells, the more smells, the more ceremony, the better I like it. And the beauty, I mean, you just get immersed in immersed it. Immersed in it, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And by the time it comes up to the consecration, I'm just a blubbering mess, you know. It's, it's great. So it's beautiful. Great. Yeah, yeah it is. Ah, uh, yeah. And, and there are certain people that if they went to mass right now and you're explaining all this beauty and they're, if they haven't had that paradigm yeah. shift, they look at it and they're lost and what words, what Latin, what is yeah. that? Yeah. But yeah. once you've had that shift, 
it's heaven on earth. I mean, it's it is. It truly is. And, you know, at the time, you know, and we're all, we're all we are all joined at one time when that consecration takes place exactly. there. There he is. You know, we are in the presence and and we're and then we consume him and we are one. It is fantastic. And um, we have a billboard out here not far away that says, you know, Jesus is coming. It's, it's put out by one of the local churches. And yeah. every time I drive by it. I say, no, Jesus already here. He's here every day. You know, he's right here in the tabernacle. He's in the he's tabernacle. with us all Absolutely. the time. Yeah. People look at me funny. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. Well, it's a huge leap for so many people. I'm, I was surprised to hear that for you, the transition, even to go to the Catholic mass wasn't a big thing. It, it wasn't for me. It was not. It was, it was, yeah. um, I remember my first mass was different because you know you get the whole catholic aerobic exercise thing up down up down turn you know but <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh that was different yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the kneeling the up and down yeah. um but interestingly enough when i was uh, up until you know up until recently in our area um there wasn't a whole lot of latin going on mm -hmm. so um i i didn't have that surprise and that was what i was expecting was more latin and there wasn't so i am so overjoyed to be seeing more and more of latin starting to come back with the young priests and 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 the new views of um and this is a soapbox i jump on immediately and i'll try not to get in the way of the pod the the, the cast here is that sure. uh, the whole the reality is what vatican ii is supposed to be and what we don't see because it was pirated um, by that group, and um, I've been studying. Uh, I've been studying Father Blake Britton's book on on reclaiming Vatican II, and it's, oh, it's yeah, fascinating. Yeah, yeah. And 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 you know, inside I knew that I knew that there was something else in there, and that we weren't seeing it because again, my readings of what I understood the Church is supposed to be versus what I was seeing, and hey, there's a lot of stuff missing. So during my whole RCIA process, yeah, I'm like, where's the meat? You know, where's the yeah, no, I've talked on. to a number of people that have said the same thing in, in RCIA. They they knew that something was missing. And, and certainly if you have the formation leaders, whoever they may be, if they did, if they don't know. Exactly. And so many of us in my generation didn't know what the heck was going on. Um, once you have your eyes opened, you realize, and I've said this to other people, like, okay, if we are going to inform, how do I say it? If we're going to uh, really make a mark and talk about tradition and the beauty and all these things, we've got to live it. We've got to be the lay people, I'm not going to get into clergy because it's, you know, lay, when yeah. we talk about apostolates, ministries of all kinds, the laity definitely need to step up and live holy lives despite certain things that are going on right. here and there because despite the headlines we've got to continue to you know focus on ourselves yeah. and, and being um conformed to christ and so i totally understand what you're saying so was there a moment that you said not only is this beautiful it's the truth I am going to pursue this. I, how, how did that all come together? It's clearly so different for so many people. It is. It is. And, and you know, I, I wish mine was a, a really great um, uh, testimony, but it's really a very simple testimony. Okay. Um, yeah. As I said, I was very comfortable with the mass. I was comfortable with the Catholic Church. And I ended up meeting a beautiful and wonderful Catholic woman who was a cradle Catholic, uh, my wife, Rhonda. And um, I had one when it was time to, to ask and to get married, you know, um, I had every intentions of raising my family Catholic. No, kidding. that wasn't even a question, <laughs> but I didn't understand the importance of my conversion. So I was like, I, I don't see the issue with me having to convert. I, I buy into everything. I was still struggling with what I called the Mary cult at the time, because there was a lot of, um, between the Hispanic community that I, that I saw and also a lot of the other, um, um, middle age group women's groups that were had all of these these um dedications to mary absolutely i know that, exactly that, what you're that talking kind about. of that kind of took me aback a, a bit and, yeah. and i was and i was i understood the true presence i just had to really uh, 
I had to, I had to bury it in there. You know, I had I had to really I wouldn't say buy in. I just had to solidify the reality of that for me. Um, um, so in other words, intellectually, sorry. I understood it. Intellectually, yeah. I understood it, but I had to get it in my heart. You know, got it. So and then, that so was you thought one or once that registered, once that hit your heart, all the other things kind of fell. In other words, well, you 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 could see. I don't I know could. Because, because what you're saying about Mary, I totally get that. Yeah, yeah. Because if you yeah. don't understand it, you're like, I don't right, see right. devotion, I don't see reverence, I see worship and all mm -hmm. this scary stuff. What's going on there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, to to finish that thought. Yeah. It, it finally, I started. I finally started to understand that when I really d started diving into um, what Mary's role you know, and understanding what she really was as the Ark of the New Covenant and her importance and that, you know, she played a key role and uh, then it all made sense. Now, people, certain people's continued uh, devotion or um, the amount of time they spend on Mary is far more than they spend on Jesus. That's still, that still bothers me, but I'm like, hey, you know, whatever everybody's going to have their own way of 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 um uh, of worship and and how they see things so um you know that's for them to to work through and and um but for me i i understand it now and and i'm very um i have i have i've had a lot of fun times uh when i'm out on the road when i was traveling a lot and meeting protestants who were evangelicals and wanted to get in my face about mary yeah and we would have some very interesting conversations once i once i really understood who she was but we could get off on that but um uh the 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 actual turning point was very simple um again we're, we're going to mass we've had my my we've had our son uh and he's at about three maybe four years old and during mass you know we everybody gets up and goes up for for communion for the eucharist and sometimes i'd go up for a blessing and other time i'd just stay in the pew and one time my son was headed out and he turns and he says mommy why isn't daddy coming up for communion and she says well because he's not catholic and he says well then i don't want to be catholic wham the the divine two by four across the head <laughs> it was a, a done deal i was like okay when does rcia start i mean i was walking out of mass going how do i sign up right now and this is you know this is march you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh wait how do we get yes, signed up I, for this did deal? I, did i miss the window yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so that's when it really that's when it hit me as to why because of the example as the father and in, in the household and and um you know not not to be sexist or anything it's just the way it is it's the way things are structured um biblically and you know and in every other way so um i realized what needed to be done and then it was like okay let's get her done then yeah so it was, it was you know and then, then it was that kind of that simple except we started i started my my rcia process over here in idaho and then we were immediately uh, I took a new position, a new job. I'd been self-employed for many, many years, and um, uh, I took a job or, or for several years, and then I took a, a, a job over in the Seattle area, mm -hmm. and we moved to the Seattle area, and I finished my RCA um, uh, in the Sammamish Parish in, in Issaquah, Washington, up above Issaquah. So that's where I actually had my Easter, my wow. Easter uh, first communion and all that. Uh, and how was that? Was that a... It was great. It was great. Yeah. I love chrism oil to this day. Oh, uh, you know, and, and as a matter of fact, I have the glory and praise chrism oil, you know, free plug there. Uh, 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 the, the chrism oil, I wear it. My beard oil is that I, I wear it every day. The, the, it, it, the it smell is beyond. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Keeps me, keeps me in prayer 24, 24, well, seven. It just, it's so true. What you said earlier about the smells and the bells. Yeah. That those elements are so beautiful and so made for us. You know how they speak yeah. to us because of the senses, because of how sensory we are. Um, there are scents that you could be away from for 20 years and it comes back to you. So this is funny about my story, having been away from the Catholic church for, what was it? I don't know, 10 plus years when I finally knew that God was calling me back and it was so dramatic when I pray the first, our father, cause I wasn't praying the, our father. It just, it's one of those things you, you, 
the Protestants affirm that, right? But you just, you're into this spontaneous prayer only, wrote prayer kind of gets pushed aside. Anyway, our father comes back, the Hail Mary comes back, glory be comes back. I'm starting to sob. And then my first mass, or maybe it was my second, I don't know, but the incense, because I was an altar server, that Mm -hmm. smell hit me for the first time in over a decade. Again, I'm just, all these memories are just flooding in about how beautiful this was. And at the same time, how ridiculous it was that I had no clue what I was leaving behind. Um, all that to say the sensory part is, is phenomenal. And it was, yeah. it was something well, and great. That's, that's why the sacraments are designed the way they are. Exactly. It's to bring it because we're human beings. Yep. God knew that God knows that. And so we have to use, we have to use our senses. You know, most, most human beings cannot go on only the spiritual or the faith thing. They have to have all those other sensory uh, yeah. perceptions to, to bring them into the moment or into whatever the uh, final outcome is supposed to be. Absolutely. So you mentioned some friends that you spoke to. Um, and I don't know if this has continued to this day, but I like asking people about after they become Catholic, you're going to, you're going to have Protestant family, friends, et cetera, that might come up with objections occasionally. Is that something that, that happens on a regular basis or what you were referencing about Mary? Was that just a point in time? Um, and if so, how do you address some of those, those, uh, common objections to Catholicism? Uh, I don't really have, um, much pushback from, family or any of that um because everybody's kind of on their own journey uh, in many ways and some of my extended family don't even really have uh any church life so they don't understand it even when i was just a protestant you know oh okay it it just doesn't register but um those situations that I was talking about with Mary, uh, when I was, uh, I had my own field service company for several years after I left the, uh, the rep firm that I was working for in Seattle. And uh, I traveled all over the, the, the country, all over the world, actually, doing various things uh, for um, water and wastewater technology. And uh, uh, the guys I would meet out there, I had, I had several guys that I worked with for some companies that I subcontracted for. And th- this one in particular, he was, uh, he was very much an evangelical. And he um, used to really get in my face about all things Catholic. And I, rem- I remember the final, the final time we ever had a conversation was he was getting on me about Mary. And I just, I just gave him the, I just broke down the Hail Mary for him, that it was all scriptural, that everything there, the same Bible he's reading. I said, give me your Bible, because he carried it with him. And I whipped it open and said, look, it's there, it's there, it's the Hail Mary is right here. And I said, finally, how, what do you mean, what do you mean Mary is just a woman? You think that, that the creator of all things, that which is, is going to just pick some girl off the street and throw his divine presence as a hum- human into her just so he can grow and be born uh, i don't think so you know don't you think that some woman who has been been divinely chosen to carry the god man is not special i mean think about it and what the angels said the angels don't use that vocabulary on just everybody and and i finally had him speechless after quite a long tirade on the yeah. whole on, on just using scripture and the hail mary that was the final thing that got him and he left the restaurant he just got up and walked out he was so mad and oh, man. um we yeah. finished this project i was on i didn't see him for another year and a half after that that was the last day of the project we were eating dinner together and then we both flew out the next day and uh i saw him about a year later at a at a christmas gathering for the company that we were all working for and he came and over and sat down and we had a great conversation. I think he'd gone and done his research. He was a whole different person. And he asked me questions and wanted to know more. And I was wow. like, wow, something happened. <laughs> you never incredible. know. You never know what you're going to do or say that's going to be that spark that could, could bring somebody around to just wanting to ask the question. Great point. Yeah. Great point. And if you had been hostile in that moment that's that's what's so important about just knowing a little bit about your faith and a little bit about defending it so that 
you and I've said this um, to family members, you know, back in the day when certain people would come to the door and talk about their religion. Yeah. It was this very much, very like angry approach. I didn't want anyone knocking on the door because right. I thought it was, it was ridiculous, but come to find out for me, I, <laughs> I was very insecure about what I believe. I had no clue what I believed. Mm -hmm. And once I reverted and this fire was lit inside of me, I welcomed those conversations because I wasn't going to be snarky. I wasn't going to try to knock them over the head. I would get into discussions. And in one case, we actually hugged each other. Mm -hmm. And it was mm -hmm. this different, different ball game that I never thought would happen where I could di dialogue without getting frustrated about what they're, what they're objecting to and you know where is that in the bible okay let's go to the bible let's actually go to the bible and, and check it out um so i really appreciate you saying that because it's so true that you know you planted a seed well obviously the holy spirit it uses us yeah absolutely us. absolutely so we have to make that make that clear but i think a lot of protestants and correct me if i'm wrong uh, in your experience they may hear of the dogmas first about Mary and use that as kind of this, I don't know, it puts, puts her into the stratosphere and they're like, whoa, what have you done? Yeah, yeah, you're and worshiping now I'm Mary. going to overcorrect or yeah. the movement, Protestantism in general over the centuries, I believe, overcorrected. And now you have this lowly, oh, she's just a woman but the Catholic Church, when you actually study beyond what you're saying about uh, typology, when you get into dulia, hyper dulia, latria, and understanding yep. those differences in reverence versus worship. But uh, did, do you see something similar in your experience? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and just to illustrate that one other time when Again, you're not even engaged in conversation. I was on a project and you know how construction sites can be. I mean, you're hearing all the vernacular in the background and, and the, the F-bomb is used as a verb and a noun and an adjective, you know, and it's just, it's always there. And um, I'm working with these crews. I would, I would, as a subcontractor and specializing in a given piece of equipment, I would be working with um, a crew of guys from the contracting firm. And I remember one time I was, I was in Tahoe uh, uh, in Tahoe, Nevada, and um, I, uh, the Tahoe plant outside Reno, Nevada, and had this group, and I'd been working with them most of the day, and they'd 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 immediately take off into their into their um, well barn talk. I grew up with it, you know. Sure. I can swear like any good sailor, and uh, <laughs> uh, and but you know by this time, you know I'm married and I got kids, and and it's just you you outgrow it most of the time. I have a temper and come somebody comes out but sure. um anyway I'm, I'm working with these guys and um uh, there was five of them and i would not join in i wouldn't join in their stories i wouldn't join in the vocabulary nothing i just just kind of let it glance off and keep us on task and change the topic and just keep moving through what we needed to do um and kept the conversation light and on you know uh, on track and i remember at lunch we were we had a break and I was still working, being that they were union, they all take off and they were doing their thing. And um, I was still working on the equipment because mm -hmm. I, I, I bring my I bring my food with me, you know, and whatever. But um, I'm working and one of the guys comes up to me, he goes, hey, I said, yeah, he goes, you know, I've been watching you. I said, yeah, he goes, you're a believer, aren't you? And then we're talking about <laughs> he said, you're a believer, aren't you? I said, you mean I believe in God? He goes, yeah. I said, well, why do you say that? I'm just watching you and, and you're, you're just not joining in. You're not letting it phase you. And you're such a great example. And I was just like, oh, well, thanks. You know, and, and then that that took into this whole, not in depth, but that this light conversation, I said, well, yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a Catholic I'm a Catholic since 2000. And so he goes, really? You know, like, you know, he's expecting me to be some evangelical or something. And yeah, I, I didn't know I'm a Catholic. Crazy. He goes, a Catholic. And, you know, and then we talk about, He'd, he'd ask something about the Bible or something, you know, we're just sitting there having a casual conversation. I'd say something, he goes, 
I didn't think the Catholics knew anything about Bibles, <laughs> you know, the same stereotypes. But by the end of that project, I, I saw him off and on and worked with him for, for a couple of weeks off and on on those projects. And, and I, I, when he left, he, he said it made an impact in his life. And all I was doing was just being me and, and doing what I knew I needed to do. So, you know, you don't have to try very hard. <laughs> now that's that, I appreciate you bringing that up as well. Why do you think... And some people would be shouting at their computers when they watch this. Of course, they know why. Why would he be surprised to hear you say Catholic? Is that, do you think that's a generational issue that we have to deal with? Or is this, what is that? Why would he not think, wow, this, this could be a Catholic Christian? I, I think it's twofold. I, I don't think it's generational anymore. I yeah. think it's just... Uh, to use the, the, the new word is systemic. <laughs> and it's because the, the media and the unchurched masses uh, are taught a bias and they are taught what they, the stereotype of what a Catholic is and or should be and what they represent. And no one expects you to be what you are. Got it. They just are not. They don't. They don't think that Catholics walk among us. <laughs> that, that you know, you're going to stick out. It's like a homeschooler. You know, we homeschooled two of our kids, and it's like you couldn't tell. It you know, ever says, "Oh, you can tell a homeschooler a mile away." Hmm, okay, show me. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, no, I don't, afraid not. You know, but um, and you know, my my the Trinity is a perfect example of that. You know how brilliant she is. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, no, no, no. That's a great, great, great answer. Um, is there anything else that you would like to cover about your journey or um, lessons for those that listen to this to this YouTube channel? Um, I'm not sure. You know, if your your audience probably is pretty diverse, but I would speak to all Catholics and especially the men. Um, own up, own up. Um, we so we talked earlier about about people's impressions you know catholics are, who are leaving the church because of any of the scandals look you're not here worshiping the priest you're not here because of that you are here for one thing and is to be part of that sacrifice to to god and to to you know to to jesus christ and get over it people um i i am not the most touchy-feely person in the world when it comes to that and i can get pretty um i can get pretty radical about the fact that you know I'm a convert for a reason. This is truth. You're, there's it's 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 like it's like the apostle said. So where else you know where else yeah, are we gonna go, we should, Lord? Yeah, where else we gonna go? go? Yeah. There's no place for you to go, folks. Yeah. And if you want truth, then then get over here, and 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 do your research and find out that yes, there's scandal. You know, we were just reading. Um, Rhonda was just reading to me earlier today the amount of. Um, the settle the amount of money that we that was just came out in a settlement for the uh, for a particular I won't say I won't name it a particular Protestant denomination a scandal amongst all their pastors down south sex scandals no different than than Catholic priests some of it even more scandalous and but you're going to hear about it no you'll never hear about it you you, you got to go look for that stuff in the schools the amount of teachers again in 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 all schools but mainly public schools and, and you have all this scandal and and it's it's we are a society without virtue yeah and until we can get virtue this faith the, the catholicism is the closest you're going to get to try and maintain that because you know as odd as it is um i'm a patriot and and this country was founded on those those people. And what's interesting is the majority of them came with a Protestant or a theist viewpoint. Yeah, good point. Very few Catholics in there, but there were some notable founders who were Catholics. But we were, we were kind of founded on a Protestant ethic. But you know what? It's really the the solidity and the discipline of the Catholic Church that can save this country. And, and that's where you, we got to go. <laughs> you got cut off. You froze, right? As you said, you know what? Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Say that again. You were saying, and then you ended with the foundation or the, um, the solid ground of the Catholic church. I didn't catch what you said. Uh, the, that this country was, was mainly founded by, by Protestants and theists. Yeah. 
and that um, due to the, they, they, they were our, our, our founding um, thought sure. and they created this, the, you know, our constitution is, is really it's divinely inspired i truly believe that but it, it came from a protestant and theist theist perspective yeah. yet um now because of all of that diversity of thought and the idea of the month club that comes out in protestant faith anybody with charisma gets to start a new church uh you know and take people off on some strange path but my that's what i ended with is that it is going to be the stability and the discipline and the truth of the Catholic Church that can save this country because it, a republic cannot survive without virtue. Franklin said it, many of the founders said it, we have to have virtue or we are done. And that's why we aren't making it. A republic cannot survive without virtue. That nailed it, absolutely nailed it. Could not agree more. Uh, your point about the any denomination that has scandal, it is worth noting this constantly is that flows up to that denomination or it makes that denomination look bad or that local church look bad. It doesn't go up to the wider Protestantism. No one says, okay, now anyone that's associated with Lutheran doctrine, Calvinist doctrine, mm -hmm. it impacts everyone, Pentecostals, everyone. Yeah. Only with the Catholic church does it flow up, which actually is a witness in my humble opinion. It's showing one Exactly. unified branch and so there are exactly. constant attacks on it to get it to topple um the gates of hell <laughs> will not well, prevail it, it proves the stability of the magisterium the it, reality it, of it it does and so there's it's i it's it's just funny to me how yeah there's very little risk when someone in a in a Protestant denomination gets caught doing something that's horrible, mm -hmm. no one says, oh, wow, um, all of Protestantism must be an error. Mm -hmm. Did you see mm -hmm. the, the number of people that were committing these sins? And my yeah. point remains, it's not good, but it's the reality of humanity. You're going to see these horrible sins sure. everywhere. If someone says, I'm a Catholic and commits heinous crimes, does that negate or, or um, contradict the truth at the top? Or is that person just doing whatever the heck they want and claiming the title Catholic? If you have to, and there was a quote, I just saw a quote from, from yeah. Venerable Fulton Sheen. I just saw a quote, I'm, I'm gonna botch it, so I probably shouldn't even say it, but it was, uh, he was basically saying, look to the example of the person that's closest to Christ. Don't look at the person that is, claiming christ but way right. way right. off anyway yeah and, um, and i think that just just as an aside i'm hoping that the example that certain bishops are setting with certain politicians in the last week and hopefully going forward regarding taking yep. the eucharist eucharist uh, that got a lot of people's attention that got a lot of my non-catholic friends attention they went wow somebody finally stood up thank goodness because they all look to the catholic church even though they'll never admit it Okay. It is the one. It's always been here. It's 2000 years. It is the history of Western civilization. And they can't admit that they still look, they look to it for a direction. No matter what yeah. they say about, about our papacy or anything. Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And even media, let's see what the Pope has to say about, uh, about right. this. Right. But um, the other thing on the Eucharist is everyone freaks out because there hasn't been much discipline, let's say disciplinary action mm -hmm. um it seems oppressive it seems wrong it seems like oh they are judging a sinner there is so much love in that action and before i reverted i may have seen it the way the you know the world views it mm -hmm. but my goodness that is love yeah. that is love it's yeah. not cowardice it's love it's not judgment it's love yeah. and um i think when people feel that and they've never sensed that type of tough tough love and again represented in the bible um you know you you're you're saving someone by by doing such an act um I guess I lost my train of thought, but we'll we'll just <laughs> we'll leave it there. You, you I, I know where you're going with that. Yeah, you see absolutely. my point. You see my point. So um, 
anyway, Charles, what a pleasure. That was, that was excellent. I appreciate your testimony, your witness, and those stories, those personal stories within uh, where you were talking to different folks. And um, even though we get worked up and talk about all these things, I, I will continue to pray for all of those that are on their journey, um, Protestant, non-Protestant, yeah. wherever they are. And let's just continue to pray um, for each other and make sure that we're doing our best job to stand firm with love, with charity, so yeah. that it's not misunderstood, that it's not some, you know, um, like you were saying, fire and brimstone, but it's certainly very real. Yeah. And salvation is real and souls are very real and time is finite. And so we all understand that. So um, thanks again, Charles. Appreciate hey, it. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, my pleasure. Everyone, uh, please share the video, like, comment, etc. Until next time, take care and God bless. Bye.